Um, when Jesus was asked about heaven um, in the Bible, it's quoted as him answering that there's many rooms in my father's mansion. Could I ask you please to share, us, share with us tonight your idea of heaven? Heaven? Yes, please. Well, are you talking of heaven on earth or heaven no. in the space? Yeah, no, heaven. What? Heaven after death. Heaven after death? Yes, please. In my concept, there is no heaven after death if there is no heaven before death. We create our own heaven. If we can't live in a peaceful society, a heavenly society, which, we, which is of our own making and born out of our own human relationship, then to expect a heaven after death is a very stupid idea, <laughs> utterly mad idea. When given a chance to build a heaven here, you rejected that chance, that opportunity. And you die in the hope that God will be befooled and say, all right, let them have created hell for others, but I'll put them in heaven. No such thing. It's impossible. Just a madman's dream. Heaven is only created here by us on earth, by ourselves. Even surrounded by hell, we create islands of heaven. Good people everywhere do that. And they are rewarded for that here on earth and they know that this is peace. They know what nobility is and they are rewarded along the course of their life for every good action they perform. They can shut their eyes in peace knowing that when they created a heaven for the servants of God here on earth, they couldn't expect a bad thing from God, who is more kind, kinder and more benign than they could ever be. But what is the nature of that heaven? According to the founder of the Ahmadiyya community, in his book entitled The Philosophy of the Teachings of Islam, he has also discussed this issue of the nature of heaven and hell. Now, it so happens that this 96 is the same year in which a hundred years before this book was published and delivered first as a lecture in Lahore in a great conference of religious uh, scholars from different religions, five important burning questions were given to the scholars to answer those questions with reference to their own divine teachings not from their own personal inclinations or preferences. This lecture was declared to be by far the best, outstanding, by all the participants, despite the fact that they were not all Muslims, not Ahmadis either. This is being published again. If you want to learn more about this issue, I would advise you to read that book. It is worthy of note because in that time, when Ahmadiyyat was very little known elsewhere in the world, Tolstoy happened to have a copy of this translated into English and published in the Ahmadiyya General Review of Religions. <coughs> and he wrote a letter to the editor that this book, which is being serialized in your magazine, is of such great importance to the entire mankind that I have never seen the like of it before. So it should be widely published and introduced to the whole world. And Tolstoy, you know, was a great scholar of Russia, highly respected in the intellectual world. So this book contains the answer to this question in detail. In, in short, what he said was that the physical world here will be left behind. It will not be recreated. The essence of this life is developed in the form of a soul which can outlive its separation from the body. While in the animal kingdom this does not happen, they have not matured enough, they are not advanced enough to be able to outlive their physical contact here on earth. So when the body dies, their soul also disappear, dissipates into nothingness. But human souls, with the mind and with the qualities which 
make it possible for humans to conceive of God and things far beyond them, back in history, in future, in this space, traveling up to the, uh, the, the distance of 20 billion years, light years, not ordinary years, in space and in time, backward and forth. This exceptional evolution of soul, according to his Masih Mother Salaam, was with a set purpose. And the purpose was to bring it closer to the Creator. And the return of this soul to the Creator is a must. Every soul, good or bad, will ultimately return to its Creator. Now, if that soul developed itself healthily here on earth, then the example of such a soul would be like a healthy fetus in the mother, in the, in the mutus of a healthy mother. It develops healthily and the mother delivers a healthy, bouncing child. And you can know that within that experience of nine months, the mother also had a sense of happiness and satisfaction and the fetus also had that sense. Although it could not tell, it could not speak, but the medical experts have now determined very clearly and positively through experimentation that the happy child within is the healthy child. He is happy. He kicks around. That is why suddenly, you know, one leg shoots out in one direction and the mother says, oh, yes, oh, what happened, you know? And she enjoys it. But the unhealthy child settles on one side of the uterus, becomes a burden and a source of pain and suffering, and the mother knows that something wrong is wrong. Once delivered, that child gains a consciousness which it had never possessed before during the, its uh, the life in, within the uterus. And as it grows, it realizes its defects if it is a defective child, congenitally born with some disadvantages. More conscience it gains, more hellish it becomes to realize that he is a suffering thing. These, ex, you know, rare, okay, a small percentage of such incidents have other meanings, of course, other reasons which can be explained. But this delivers a message to man that you are responsible for nurturing of the soul within you. If you are evil, if you are unhealthy, your soul will be deprived of all pleasure when it is delivered into the hereafter. Now, the example of such hell and heaven has been further illustrated and explained by the founder of the Hindu community <laughs> by way of drawing our attention to some uh, examples such as, he says, if somebody is healthy, strong, but extremely thirsty and also hungry, you offer him a chilled bunch of, uh, of, of grapes and that would be a heaven for him. It will provide him energy, it will provide him taste, it will provide, provide him that cool shade of having chilled fruit at the time when you needed it most. But if a man, is, even if he's at the verge of death because having, he's dehydrated, but he's very nauseated, very much nauseated, you offer the same bunch to him, and he would, he would prefer death rather than to have a taste of one single uh, grape out of that bunch. So remove it, because the very sight creates nauseation, nausea. No, it's the same thing. Both require energy, both are needy, both are thirsty. The same thing is heaven for one and hell for the other. So, if we are trained here in such pursuits of pleasure, which we will not get in the hereafter, if we abhor the concept of God being discussed daily in our houses, and the memory of God is a punishment, and the pleasure of going to disco is a joy forever, then after death 
that would be your hell, <laughs> because there will be no disco, no mad music, etc., to keep you company. God will become closer. Here he is seen from a distance because our faculties are not yet fully developed. Faculties, according to the Quran, after the rebirth of man, the soul in fact, will, will be highly enhanced. He will feel closer to God if he had been in love with God and godliness, if he had been in love with humanity, in fact if he had been in love with the good attributes, which are divine attributes, then he will find himself in heaven. Because he will not only be closer to them, he will be able to enjoy them with far more enhanced sensibilities. <coughs> so, you see what hunger does? It enhances our capability to enjoy food. That's all it does to us. After creating earth, the more hungry you are, the more you are capable of enjoying things. So if you have been craving goodness here on earth, and suddenly you are brought closer to that, and your craving, sense of craving is also enhanced, and your requirement or feeling of dearth without them is, is powerful here, when suddenly you are brought closer and your faculties are enhanced, this is heaven. But it will be sort of materialized, not materialized, but presented not only in emotions, but in figures as well. Like in dream, we see gardens, like in dreams we experience some players, of all sorts in fact. And sometimes the dreams are so clear, so powerful that we feel that what we are witnessing is the real life. Hazrat Basim Islam has given the example of that dream, but said that is only a human psychic experience. If dreams are realized and God can, without creating matter, just by creating a spiritual entity which has that <coughs> capability of enjoying goodness which will also be given a sort of form, image, of trees, of fruits, of, of gardens and things, then this will be a heaven which you cannot conceive here on earth, but you can guess a little bit that it would be something of the players you have all been seeking, but you have never been able to must to have player to the utmost of your desire. There you will have it as you desire. Is that what you wanted to do, or have I gone out? Of, uh, huh?